So the main question when doing a fox body swap, I mean a coyote swap on a fox body is how much does it cost? Well, LMR states it costs 10 to 20,000 to do the swap itself. Depending on if you're doing it yourself, how in depth you want to go, if it's going to be a straight race car, if it's going to be a street car. So just to kind of run you guys down, I'm going to keep air conditioning for sure. I found a shop here. I'm in Stockton, California. I found a shop here that could make my Fox Body AC lines uh, fix, fit to the AC compressor on the Coyote. So I'm going to go with that. Uh, manual rack, Flaming River probably, manual steering rack, and manual brakes. The reason you have to convert to manual brakes is the booster itself is going to hit the motor, whether it's a four-cylinder, V8, whatever. So you have two options. Either you convert to hydro boost from a 99 to 04 and retain power steering. And if you retain power steering, you have to get the brackets that move the alternator over here, up here somewhere. And then you have to get the power steering itself, the lines, and run Hydro Boost. So I didn't want to do all that. Didn't want to run all these lines and all that. So I'm going to go with the Maximum Motorsport Manual Brake Kit and the Manual Rack. Uh, I don't really mind the Manual Rack. I've had a Manual Rack before. It's not that bad, depending on what tire size you're running. It's really not that bad. From a dead stop, of course, it's going to be harder than when you're rolling, but it's not that bad. Uh, AC I decided to keep it's gonna be pretty much like a weekend car. Uh, I do drag a lot um, Sometimes at the track so I need to keep the AC it gets like 110 out here in the summer 100 degrees So I need to keep the AC I am gonna run a six-speed this car is originally automatic, but I'm gonna run a six-speed t56 Magnum I've already ordered the bell housing and I got the center force clutch that I'm going to use So besides that there's another couple things you're going to have to address. Exhaust. Uh, my plan is run the BBK long tubes with the catted X pipe. And I'm going to look into get the quietest mufflers I can get cat back for the four cylinder. I kind of, I mean, for the Fox body. Kind of want to keep it looking like a four cylinder. So I might even keep those wheels on the front. Uh, maybe get like some 15s for the rear with some slicks or drag radios to daily on. But for the most part, I want to keep it looking like a sleeper, exactly how it looks now. So I might even get the GT cat back where it kind of like dumps it before the muffler so you can't really see the tips. Might do that. Another thing you're going to have to look into is, uh, besides the power or the manual brakes, hydro boost, that stuff. Are you going to run power steering, manual rack, AC, or are you going to run AC? Gauges. I wanted to keep the stock Fox Body cluster. But I guess from doing research, a lot of people say it's really a lot of work. But I'm going to see if I can keep it. If not, I'm going to go with the Dakota Digital Cluster just to make things a lot more simple. Uh, I am doing all the work myself here in my garage uh, with help from friends uh, calling, giving me part numbers and all that. So that's what I'm going to go with. Um, another thing you have to address is going to be your fuel if you're going to run the stock coyote uh, even with bolt-ons or whatever you could keep the fox body gas tank fox body sending unit all that lmr or power by the hour sells a kit that'll bolt up to everything like that they sell the fittings they bolt right up to the sending unit run the fuel lines to the front uh, they come with a regulator mount the regulator and then a return style system for the coyote it'll have a fitting that'll hook up right here everything is literally just plug and play Another thing is the harness. I'm going to order. I just ordered it today, actually. should be here in a couple days from Summit Racing. Um, are the 15 to 17 control pack. So I've heard through a friend that's also doing the swap that the control pack for the 15 17 comes with the fuse box. And it's kind of like doesn't really give you anywhere to mount it. He had to extend his and mount it on the inside of his fender. So that's why I kind of got the fenders off, hide some of these wires. I'm only going to keep the light harness from the Fox body. Everything else, the computer harness and all that is gone. Uh, sold it with um, the motor and transmission and all of that. So, 1517, that's, I guess, the bigger issue with the Gen 2s, which is 1517, 11 to 14. I'm guessing you don't have to run the fuse box. Don't quote me on that. I haven't done that swap. Uh, this is my first swap, like I said. But just from things I've been hearing and people that I've done the swap, 
research I've done, I don't think you have to run a fuse box with the 11 to 14. So I think that's why people go with them. They're a little bit cheaper. This one, I just went with the Gen 2, not because I wanted this one. It just was the first one to come up. The price was good. So I said, you know, fuck it. I'll go with the Gen 2. I think it puts out a little bit more horsepower than the 11 to 14, but we'll see. Besides that, the control pack, I don't really see another difference other than oil cooler as well. You're going to have to run a 11 to 14 style um, oil setup. All it is, uh, oil filter setup. All it is, is um, you take out the oil cooler. I have the oil cooler over there. You take out the oil cooler. You buy the fitting from Power by the Hour. I don't think Ford sells it, but I got it from Power by the Hour for about 13 bucks, And it just screws in. You just use the stock uh, 11 to 17 oil filter, and it just bolts right up. Usually, the oil filter or the oil cooler comes out like another 6 inches. And apparently, that'll hit something when you're putting it into the K-member or something like that. So, like I said, first time doing the swap. I'm new to this. So, if you're not going to run power steering, you can use the stock Coyote alternator or bolt right up. Everything will go right in. If you're going to run power steering, the power steering pump is going to go here. The alternator is going to go over here. And you're going to have to run a 99 to 04 alternator reverse mounted. They sell the brackets, all that. Power by the hour has that. If you're going to run the stock K-member, you have to get a Morosa oil pan. Um, the price of the oil pan, I think, is like 400 bucks. That's pretty much what the K-member cost with the motor mounts and the spring purchase to retain the stock control arms. I'm going to run the stock four-cylinder springs for now for weight travel purposes. But the tubular K-member from AJE is what I'm going to run. It's like 400 bucks with the, control, with the um, spring purchase and the motor mounts. So it beats changing the oil pan, cutting your K-member, and having to buy the motor mounts for the 4.699-04. So... That's what I'm going to go with. Other than that, when I bought the motor, everything was good. I got it home. I was taking it out of the truck. And I broke one of these. I don't know where the sensor is. But I broke one of the sensors. I looked it up. I guess these are, uh, these are like, um, they're called the CMC valve or something. They control the intake runners. They like uh, open them, close them for idle, better idle and better uh, gas mileage. So a lot of people delete them. I got these little brackets. Uh, I broke the sensor anyway, so I said, ah, fuck it, I'll get the little brackets, it'll clean this up. And one of my friends who test fitted his uh, Gen 2 said that this would hit the firewall on the, on the Fox body, so I just deleted that. Little brackets, you could get them at, uh, I think it's Mod Mustangs, it's in LA area, Southern California area, like 30 bucks, I got these to delete it. So that's one thing you're going to have to do just to get the motor in there to fit. These little deletes, they're not screwed down yet, that's why they're making noise. That and the oil cooler thing. That's like a couple bucks. So between those two things, it's like 60 bucks or something like that. And then I'll go into more depth of what I'm going to do with the heater core once I get closer to putting the motor in. Heater core lines and all the vacuum lines you're going to be able to delete if you are putting it in the Fox body. So like again, this is for an 87 through 93 Fox body. Pretty similar, I think, to the SN95 uh, swap except for those ones. Uh, I think it's 96 and up already have the hydro boost so yeah pretty much other than that I think I got everything um, I didn't document taking off the fenders and like I said taking off the fenders the bumper um, taking off the four cylinder motor because that's pretty basic Fox body stuff if you're gonna do the swap you're probably already familiar with the Fox body so <clears throat> that's why I didn't document that this is the, I already have a gas pedal. The guy I got the motor from gave me the gas pedal and all the other pedals that are in that box and uh, body harness and radiator hoses and all that. But I got the Maximum Motorsport um, manual brake conversion. Pretty simple to install. Um, they have step-by-step -step instructions. My first time doing one and I was able to follow the instructions and it was pretty simple. So we're going to go to manual brakes on uh, this one. One thing that you have to know is when converting to manual brakes or pretty much the Fox Body Master Cylinder, these brake lines are going to hit the motor when it comes time to drop it in. So what you have to do is, one, either convert to manual brakes and get a 86 Ford Ranger. Centric makes a Master Cylinder. 86 Ford Ranger V6 uh, Master Cylinder will work. It's going to be the exact same thing as the Fox Body one, but these lines are going to be on this side and this side over here. So you'll 
get enough clearance right here to get the motor in. This is going to be pretty much pushed up against the firewall here. Um, I'm not going to shave the engine bay or anything like that. Uh, honestly, I don't have the patience for that. And I was just going to clean it up, paint it, and then just delete what I'm not going to use and hurry up and get the damn motor in there. So this is where I'm at right now. Um, <clears throat> hopefully by this weekend, it'll be ready to go in. Might not have time to put it in this weekend, but hopefully by this weekend, I'll have engine bay ready to go in, manual brakes done, brake lines done, K-member on, uh, front suspension on, everything ready to drop the motor in. I'm going to try to drop it in from the top. Some people say you got to kind of like float it in place, put the K-member up to it, but we'll see all that when we get there. Again, um, I'll go through stuff as I get to it. I probably won't do like installation videos and all that, but I'll kind of walk you guys through what I'm doing after I do it or before I do it and all that. So like I said, hopefully this weekend I'll have enough time to get all that taken off, put the K-member on, motor mounts on and all that, uh, put the long tubes on the motor, run the control pack, and tomorrow I will definitely finish the manual brake. So keep checking in, man.